First um, uh, injury update, we had an unfortunate injury with Adam Forshaw uh, two days ago. So he was back in training, and he took a, a knock uh, in a collision on his, on his kneecap, and unfortunately he fractured the kneecap. So he, uh, it's a six-week injury, so that puts him out for the season. Um, and obviously the main thing is... Uh, Adam is one of the guys in the team that I think gives more to the group and and does everything he can to to think about the team first. And so for us, this is obviously painful um, because he's an important guy, but we will still have him around. He will still be a big part of the group in the in the next weeks and and we will still need his presence within the team. So uh, it, sh it should be a rather relatively straightforward recovery and and then you know by summer he'll be he'll be back and ready to go. Um, and then the only other two are, are Patrick, who's making good progress and has been running uh, on the Alter G and should be on the pitch next week. And, uh, and then Tyler Roberts is also making uh, good progress. And then, you know, I haven't spoken at all since uh, the, the comments I made on, on uh, Talk Sport or whatever that is about, about overtraining and, and Marcelo. And, and listen, I, I want to say that this was not intentional uh, to to uh, attack Marcelo in any way, it, it was a little bit careless, and I can see how it was interpreted in some ways that way. But it was more about the state of the the player pool, and and now what I had observed in trying to help take the team forward. And I think you'd be hard pressed to find an incoming coach that has spoken more positively about the the person he replaced in the way that I've spoken about Marcelo and it's because I have major respect for him. So I you know I haven't said anything uh about anything after that and I've seen a little bit of the response but but I want to make sure that that again um the respect for Marcelo that everyone understands that that was uh at a very very high level from me and from everyone here. Um good. And then the last thing I want to say is Congratulations to Patrick Vieira for, for being inducted into the Premier League Hall of Fame. Uh, well deserved, and and I don't know if you can be inducted twice as a as a as a manager as well. But I think he has high potential to to be an incredible manager in this league for many years as well. So congratulations, Patrick. Chris, hi. Uh, just go back to the foreshore. Can you clarify exactly what the injury is? It's a fractured patella. Right. So he just kind of took a, a knock in that space and he, he was having trouble recovering from it and then it didn't feel good as the day went on. So that's, that's where he's at. So the fact he's still going to be around, around the group, is that, is that to keep their spirits up? Or? Yeah, he's a, bit, he's a leader in the team. He's an important guy in our team. So yeah, we, we definitely need, need his presence for sure. So how big a loss on the pitch is he? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's unfortunate, right? I, I think he's been really good since I've been here and really important for many years here. Um, so, you know, the, the one silver lining we have is that, that Calvin's back to 100%. So Calvin will start um, on the match on Monday. Um, so, you know, it's obviously never good to lose an important player, but, but we, we have a little bit of luck in the situation that we can bring Calvin into the mix. But Adam, Adam's been in, an incredible leader and an incredible player, again, since the moment I stepped in the door. It's two weeks since the, well, more than two weeks from your last game to... To, to your next one. Has, has that been a bit frustrating in a way, having played so well down at Watford that you've not been able to maintain some momentum? Yeah, I think, you know, the season always has ebbs and flows. And and you could argue that it would have been nice to, to, to keep playing in the moment, but it was also nice to have a little bit of break to, to get guys more healthy. Um, so whatever, you know, we're, we're ready. In the moment, we, we know that there's a lot of work to be done yet, and the focus these last two weeks has been about preparing ourselves um, entirely to be ready for the next challenges. They probably deserve a break then after your record, 10 points in six games. That's some impact for a team that was struggling. Uh, have you exceeded your expectations, or are you where you thought you might be, or, or just where you hoped you would be? Well, I, I said to the group a lot that they're ahead of schedule for me, that, the, that they've adapted really well, that we, if you look through it, you know, we've, tra we've changed the way we train, the way we play, the tactics, the way we interact here at Thorpe Arch. They have to get used to my leadership style, my way of communicating. Um, and I can only 
uh, say that I've never had a group that has adapted and given more than what they have. And, and obviously in the situation, it's been important to draw on that, but, but it's a big compliment to the, to the group we have here. So, um, yeah, I'm, a, I'm, I'm personally, I'm really excited for the match on Monday and I know our guys are ready to get back at it again and, and know that it's a really important stretch for us. How important is Monday night, bearing in mind your subsequent three games are City, Arsenal, and Chelsea, which might be considered sort of free hits. Yeah, I mean, in, incredible challenges coming up, right? Some really, really good opponents, but we've done a good job of staying in the moment and going step by step. And so that's my my focus right now is is not about how important the three points are or w with the upcoming schedule. It's Crystal Palace is a team we have a lot of respect for. They made it to the FA Cup semifinal. They've had an incredible season. They have a lot of quality players that are, are very dangerous in 1v1 situations and in transition moments, and they have a really good coach. Uh, so, And we know that Palace is a tough place to play. So it will be a big challenge for us, and it will require entire concentration and focus on, on the task at hand. You'll be just a point behind them if you win. Does that drag them in to the scrap, or does it give you belief that you're all... I, I think if you can see there's twists and turns every night. <laughs> so... Again, I, the, the only thing for us to do is to just focus on, on, on us and, and making sure that we have a performance that gives us a chance to get the three points. How many teams do you think are in the scrap at the moment? And mo most people will, will think logically that Watford and Norwich are down. And then is it one from two, three, four? I mean, it, 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 can depend, it depends on every result, really, again. And so I don't really care about anyone else. <laughs> Of course, when you watch the other games, it's helpful when they don't get points, but you have to expect, I said it right after the Watford game, that by the time we play our, our match against Palace, that the table would look a lot tighter and a lot different, and, it, and it's uh, already has shown that. So we just have to take care of ourselves. Burnley won last night. That's four points from two games under their caretaker. Were you surprised that they sacked Sean Dyche? Um, I mean, uh, Sean had a, a big um, history at the club. Um, and so for me, you never like to see managers lose their jobs. Uh, you know, everybody puts a lot into this, and, and especially when a manager has big history and, and has meant a lot to the club. I, you know, I said that here with Marcelo too. Um, but this is the business we live in, um, and, and everyone has to try to do the best that they can as, as players, as, as managers, as kitmen, whatever it is. So um, thankfully, we have that here at Thorpe Arch. We have an incredible group of people that are totally committed to the common cause. And, and, and my job is to help lead them um, in a way where everybody feels valued and everybody can do their best. Do you Sorry, Chris. Sorry, can I just ask two, two more? No, you've asked a number already. Can we let everybody else have a go? Sorry. All right. <laughs> Uh, Catherine from BBC Radio Leeds, nice to meet you. Yeah. Um, you touched very briefly on, uh, on Patrick Vieira. Um, obviously, you maybe had some good clashes with him over the years. Can you talk to us a little bit more about yes. how, how you found him to deal with? Well, you know, I mean, when he... When he first made the decision to come to MLS, we were all excited to have somebody of his stature in the league. And then when he came to New York City FC, it meant that I, I had to hate him. <laughs> um, but he's a, not an easy guy to hate because, first of all, from a, a expertise and a work perspective, he's very good, very good coach. Um, and and we have very conf we have sort of differing styles and different different ways of thinking about the game, but um, it made for always really interesting matches. And we had some heated moments uh, when we were in New York together. Um, but I think over time we, we grew to really respect each other. We got to know each other more and more. Uh, one friend we had in common was Gerard Houllier, and Gerard was always there to kind of help bring us together in some moments when we had these derby matches. Um, I followed him and, and saw him one time when I was in Salzburg, but I followed him in Nice, and I thought he did a really, really good job there. Um, and I was really happy for him to see, to see him be in the Premier League because I think it's where he belongs. Um, yeah, but again, I think he, he's very clear with the way he wants to play. I think he, he's very good with his players. The, the, uh, if you talk to players that have played for him, they all have massive respect for him, and not just because he was a good player, which he was an excellent player, but because he's a good manager. So um, it will be a big challenge on the day, um, 
you know, we know each other pretty well. We, we have new groups now, um, and, and it'll be a, a little bit, again, a clash of styles, but an but, uh, uh, opportunity for, for me and, my, and, and our team to test ourselves against a very good manager and, and, and a very good team. And you've talked a little bit about having this, this two-week opportunity to get to know the players better, work with them. I wondered if you could maybe give us maybe a couple of examples of things that particularly you've been focusing on over these last couple of weeks. Yeah, well, a lot of tactical um, nuances to what we're trying to achieve. I think we've come a long way in seven, eight weeks. Um, and now it's about, you know, pushing them to be even more concentrated and clearer with everything that we're, we're doing on the pitch. The, from a mentality and motivation and and inspiration perspective th this is a fantastic group to to work with i never have any questions about where their hearts are and uh, and minds and it's just trying to guide their energy so that they understand on the pitch how to play with each other so you know i thought that uh, the defensive performance in watford was very good there were things we we felt we could have done better with the ball in build up phases and in the in the last third um, we're continuing to try to push them with the intensity of winning balls, of counter-pressing, of, of limiting the opponent uh, in, in, in transition moments, and then still trying to be creative and, and have poise in the last third of the pitch so that we can, again, create more chances and more goals. But to win 3-0 at Watford, I think, was a, was a very important result for us and a, and a step forward for us, and we're just continuing to try to iron out all of the little details to, to get better and better. And one more for me, um, Calvin Phillips returning to the starting eleven, and I'm sure will be very welcome news. Just how instrumental will he be in, firstly, making sure that Leeds secure their Premier League status, and just his overall impact on the yeah. team for the remaining games of the season? Well, I, 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 I've, I've, I've seen from the beginning that he has a, an effect in the group, no question, um, because of his personality, his quality, what he means to being part of Leeds United. Um, and so my challenge to, to Calvin has been to push him to be better and better and to be the best. Like, that's my goal for him. Um, so we've talked a lot about the intensity at which I think he can play uh, against the ball and then the ease and the clarity that he can play with the ball. And, and getting that balance right and, and, and the ability to sh kind of shift gears from one, one, one thing to the next. And, and he's been great in training. Um, he had a, a really good training week. He's fully fit. He's fully ready. And, and we're excited for him to be back. He's always a player that's going to attract a lot of headlines, a lot of outside noise, ongoing speculation over a contract extension for him. Is that something that you have to manage as well as what he does on the pitch as to how... He's dealing with all of that away from the pitch. No, we haven't. I, you know, typically, I, the only thing I talk about uh, from an outside perspective is how certain messaging can affect what's happening to us inside and for us to release the stress of what's happening with the table and other matches. And then the, uh, the only other part for me is just working intimately with players to help them grow and develop and understand their roles and commit to it all the way. And, and I find that when we have that kind of uh, work ethic and, and, and work style that we can really achieve a lot and we can get the best out of people. So, you know, I, I don't speak much with agents. I don't speak much in, in broad perspective with players about their careers. They have plenty of people around them to do that. I just try to help them understand when they're here with us how to maximize their potential. Thank you. Yeah. Amen. How is Calvin in, in, in his own mind? Because it must have been a frustrating time for him just sitting on the sidelines and seeing you know, his boyhood team struggling. Yeah, I think um, first the kind of injury that he had was, was a serious one. You know? So I think I, when, it, when, any, when a player experiences that kind of injury, the first thing is you have to become selfish and, and try, to, try to do everything you can to get yourself healthy again. Um, but since I've been here, he's been... Even though he wasn't in training from the beginning, he was a big part of every day and every video session and every meeting and his energy of being around the team was always um, massive. So um, I know that he's excited. Um, I think he's played well when he has come off, off the bench for us in the couple of matches, and I know he's 100% fit and ready to go. So uh, it's, a, it's big for us to have him back. You say you don't look at the other teams but I mean as a football obsessive like you it must be hard not to to know that Everton came back late in the game the other night that Burnley 
had a pretty convincing victory. It's, yeah, I it's watched. Hard not to watch. I watched Burnley last night. You know, I, I still watch all the games. Um, and and Burnley impressed me last night. You know, they they played hard. They 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 went after Southampton, and I thought they were the better team on the day and deserved to win. Um, and so I think we have to expect that. You know, there's there's a lot of teams that are that want to stay in this league. <laughs> And I don't think anyone's going to give less than their best effort. And so expecting less from teams, it would be foolish and naive. And, and again, my focus with us is just that we are maximizing and that every day we step on the pitch that we're getting, giving our best. And, and we have a group that's done that. So um, that, that, that can help us control our destiny more than anything. Okay. Yep. Great. What's the plan for the more established 23s tonight? Is the Palace game a bit close to comfort? We had a discussion about each player. Some will play, some won't. Um, I don't want to give away Andrew's uh, uh, lineup, um, but I will be there. I mean, we're all excited for this match. You know, we, we're all hearing about the attendance numbers. Um, I think it's outstanding. The support in this city for, for our club is like nothing I've ever seen. Um, and I'm going to be there as, as a fan as well and excited to watch the match. So... You know, but we'll we'll try to measure the minutes um, for the guys that play in a way that that keeps them ready and fresh for us come come Monday. Charlie Creswell says he'll consider himself a first team player when he's played like fifty games. Hmm. Do, you, do you like that attitude? And how how soon could you consider him a first team? Player? I consider him a first team player now. You know, I, I I we had that even discussion when we were in our, in our scouting meeting. I think Charlie's uh, when he played came in against Wolves, he looked. He looks totally at ease and clear. Uh, his personality is such that he's not afraid of anything. And, and he, he, even the first training session I had, he was the loudest player on the pitch. So, you know, he, he's not shy. He doesn't shy away from big moments, just like he did against Wolves. Um, he, needs, he needs to play, right? He's a young, talented player that has big potential as a leader um, of, of, of our club. And we just need to continue to give him uh, big experiences so that we can develop him as quickly as possible. Aaron? Jesse, we saw uh, Ian Pervey, the picture on the grass with you this week. What, what have been your first impressions of him coming back from injury and what's your long-term plan for him? First of all, he looks 100%, so we, we sent him back to Blackburn um, as they really wanted him back for the last three matches to, to push to get into the playoffs. And, and he, to be fair, he wanted to go as well and he felt it was important for him to get some, some uh, match minutes um, and help that team. And then I think... He's uh, taken information really well. Uh, he's trained really well. I, I can see that 1v1, he has some real quality, and he can, he's shifty, and he's hard to defend in those moments. And then I've just tried to continue to, to help him understand a little bit the game model and what the roles are for, for players in his position. And, and I think he had a really good week and a half of training. So that gave us all confidence that, that he's ready to go back to Blackburn and, and do whatever he can to help them. We've seen the players in various locations across the past two weeks. Was it important for you to give them some R&R before yeah. such a long break? I mean, you can't – for me, with, with the break, of course, it's a little strange to, to have uh, a pause at this point. But the international players, the way it works is the only pause they have, they go and play with their national teams and they come back right away. So – we gave those guys an extra day, so they had like a three-day weekend, and then the other players had two days, but then came back and, and had a really strong week of training. And, and that's, the, that's my way of work is I always think no matter what your job is, work-life balance is really important. We all have lives to lead and families to love and enjoy. And then when we come here, we intensively work here at a way that makes us feel good about the work ethic we have, the motivation for each other, the mentality to try to achieve as much as we possibly can so that we're maximizing potential. And I think my way is to try to get the best out of both worlds and, and to have healthy, happy players that know that their commitment is really valued here and that we, we care about them. So um, I think we've seen a good response to that and, and, I, and I hope to continue to, to have good performances that lead to more points. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, so just, just thinking about Adam's four shows role for the rest of the season, you know, looking back, you've, you've had senior players in up to now. In what sort of ways do they, do they help the group? Yeah. yeah, well, I mean, just being around the team. So, for example, we brought Adam uh, to Watford, 
and we knew that he wasn't we, we brought him thinking maybe there was a small chance that we could consider him but it was mostly to be around the team to be there uh in the hotel to to be there in the pregame meetings to be there before the match you know to to make sure that he had an impact on on the preparation for the game and and i believe in leaders i believe in them i try to give room for the players that are leaders in the team to, to contribute, to, to be a part of decision making, um, and to take ownership of the environment and of the team. And so fortunately we have a group here, I, I commented about what a good captain Liam Cooper is, but it's not a one man job. And it's something that I think we have to draw on all of our leaders and in the moment, that's the biggest impact that Adam can have right now and a very important impact that he can have within our, within our team. And just on the other end of the age spectrum, we talked a little bit about the under-23s. How important was that um, in the discussions you had initially about the, about taking the job? How important is it for the club that you bring players through? And how important is it for you personally? Yeah, yeah. So um, for me, I, I've, I've worked with so many young players, and it was a big part of the philosophy of all the clubs that I worked at. And I, and I think... I th maybe I even said this in the media in the beginning, but if you want to produce young, brave players, then the person that has to be the bravest is the first team coach. And you have to believe in young players. You have to put them on the pitch and you have to challenge them to be their best. Um, I had a long, I had a long talk with Sam Greenwood and, and Joffe today about their role in the team and, and how much I believe in them and how important they are. Uh, it's been a continual process with, uh, Cree Somerville and he's responded really well um, and I think been fantastic every day uh, since I've been here and, and he's going to continue to be a contributor so um, and that could go we talked about Charlie we've we uh, uh, Chris Kleisen like I could go down the list of more and more and more but me being here is also I think uh, a signal to the academy that that uh, we believe in youth development and that as a club we're committed to, to developing players, much like Marcelo was and, and his, his uh, attention to what was going on with the 23s and in the academy. So um, they've, people here have been really receptive to trying to learn my playing philosophy. And I've been encouraging them to learn at their own rate, but that it's also their team. Like, I don't want to be the one making decisions about lineups. I don't want to be the one making decisions about what they do in training every day and, and, and what kind of subs to make and all this. It's Each team has to have its own identity, but then fit within the construct of, of how we're trying to play football as a club and, what the, and the mentality that we're trying to create. Well, you said with Bamford that you were hopeful you might have him for the last two games. Do you still think that's feasible? I do think it's feasible. Um, I think he's exactly on track for where we had hoped he, he would be. Um, we're, we're, we're trying to be cautious and aggressive at the same time, and that's always the balancing act, a little bit of getting guys back. I think one of the things that you have to give credit to um, with the medical team here is, is um, there are statistics that show that we've had a lot of injuries over the past year, but that we get players uh, to return quicker than, than a lot of places do. So, and I think that's a credit to the medical staff and what they've, what they've been able to accomplish. So, for example, Junior Furpro came back much quicker than we had thought he would. Um, so uh, I would say that Patrick, I'm cautiously optimistic that, that we can get him back and have him available for those last two matches like we hoped.